that's for sure. And you can see these sharks are a lot more active right now. And that's because they actually heard Philip walking along the top of this tank. And they think they're going to get fed. Well, soon they're going to be disappointed. Or maybe not. We just have to wait and see here. <laughs> now once Philip is inside this tank, you'll see these sharks will most likely swim away from him. And that's the same thing that would happen to you if you encountered these animals in their natural habitat. So the best thing to do would be to just stay calm and you should be all right. Well, that was fairly clean, close, but clean. All right, looks like Philip will give these guys a, a moment to adjust his presence in the tank here, and uh, he should be on his way. Now, a lot of people ask what would happen if Philip entered this tank, got scraped and maybe bleeding a little bit. A lot of people think that would be a problem. Actually, it's not. Even though sharks have a very keen sense of smell and can detect one drop of blood over a mile in water, it's fish blood they're looking for, not human blood. Well, it looks like uh, Philip is ushering one of his big nurse sharks over there. Okay, he's got a hold of Loretta. Loretta is a large female nurse shark of our tank. Whoa, wait a minute, she wants out of there. And I'll tell you, uh, when a shark wants to go, you don't really want to restrain them, that's for sure. You've got to remember, these are wild animals, folks, and we never know what they're going to do. All right, let's see how, okay. How about everybody waving to Philip and Loretta? There you go, no, nope, she still doesn't want to have any part of this. Yeah, well, he's just gonna have to deal with, with this whole situation here. Now, a lot of people ask, uh, why do sharks attack? Well, in the case of Philip, it's a thing of mistaken identity. Divers like Philip actually look like seals to sharks, which are the favorite prey for both the tiger and the great white. Now, one thing Philip's gonna do here for you, he's gonna see if he can get one of these sharks to go through a hoop. Not as easy as it sounds, because this actually resembles the method used to catch these sharks and put them in this tank. And they're usually not too excited about going through this tank, or this loop. And they've been a little agitated here lately, so uh, we'll see how, how lucky he gets today. The hands will be pretty close to the mouth of one of these guys. Not the best place for your hands. All right, let's see what he's going to do here. Uh, he's not getting much cooperation. Is he going to get lucky? They're looking for any other way out. Did he get lucky? Okay, he did. Very good. Another successful mission for Philip here. Well, let's see what that's, what's his uh, next thing up his sleeve here. You know, I, all uh, Philip's life, he's been, uh, uh, his ambition has been to be a musician. He's been trying to practice all his life. He's never really fulfilled it. So he's decided to take care of that in this tank. And as far as I'm concerned, this is as close as he'll ever get to being a musician. So there it is, Banjo Shark, <laughs> only at the Florida State Fair. Okay, yeah, I think he's losing his mind myself. Okay, well, he got away with that one. Very good. Now, these like animals play a very important role in the ocean. They eat all the dead, dying, and diseased fish, and that's how they get the nickname Garbage Bin of the Ocean. But you know, they also play an important role in our lives too, believe it or not. These animals are over 200 million years old by design and very seldom get sick, diseases. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like Philip is going to introduce his new show, Dancing with the Sharks. There it is. Okay, and now I'm sure you can see why nobody else wants to dance with Philip. Okay, a little kiss on the belly. I told you that was his sweetheart. Yep, he's off and going here. All right, now another thing Philip's going to try and do here for you. See if you can get one of these sharks upside down. Now what that's basically going to do is put a shark into a hypnotic trance, if you will, similar to that of an alligator, when you get an alligator upside down. All right, you can see uh, Loretta's pretty much zoned out here. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe, maybe not. And, oh, she's out of there. Yeah, well, that, was, that wasn't too bad. Now a lot of people think Philip can go in this tank and hand out food to these sharks. That would be kind of a crazy thing to try, because in a small area like this, it would... What? What? Oh, you got a tooth. Okay. Well, when the shark. All right. Are you going to try and bring it out? All right, good. I think Philip's uh, going to try and make his way out of the tank now. Now, the animals you see here will be released back into their natural habitat at the end of our season, and we do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it gives these guys a chance to go back home. And number two, these animals are still growing. Our lemon sharks here, Loretta, she's about seven foot. 